Hi guys, I'm Mr. Adamucci and I'm teaching the continental drift theory today, which is an important theory which states that the continents actually move, okay? And that was really a hard topic for people to believe a hundred years ago, that these massive, huge, large continents could actually move around. And it was first proposed by a man named Alfred Wegener. His name, last name starts with a W, but he was German. And so the W is actually pronounced like a V like Wegener. And it was around 1910 that he proposed this theory that the continents move. And like in any good theory, he needed strong evidences to back up his theory. And he had three really strong evidences. The first one would be one that you probably have noticed already when you were in elementary school. And that had to do with matching landforms. And he looked at continents such as Africa and South America and if you look closely at them, you could see, these are pictures, all pictures from Wikipedia, that they connect into each other, okay? And it is possible that they fit like a puzzle piece. And you don't even have to stop there. Look at the tip of India. And if you look at the tip of India, it is theorized that it could fit into the opening there in Antarctica. Even Australia could fit down in Antarctica down there as well. So there was ideas of matching landforms and that the continents fit together like puzzle pieces, okay? Continents fit together like puzzle pieces. Other evidences had to do with the fossils. If we look over here, he looked at dinosaur fossils 300 million years ago, long before human was even here. And he theorized that during this uh, dinosaur time, all the continents were once together in a large... Um, large supercontinent called Pangaea. And he looked at different fossils, fossil evidence. And he looked at one dinosaur called the Lystrosaurus, okay? And the Lystrosaurus, if you look at this picture, was a big, large looking cow-like thing. It had four legs, was pretty heavy, not a flyer, couldn't run really fast. But what's interesting is if you look at the brown shade here, he was found in Africa, India, and they even found his fossils in Antarctica. Now, how in the world did they find his fossils all over? Did he fly across? Look at a present day map. Wegner thought that this was crazy for him to swim down. Look at the way this fossils are on this animal. It was no way that it could fly and there's no humans present during this time. So it couldn't have taken a boat down. So it was theorized that he just walked across because it was a supercontinent, Pangaea. And the fossils didn't stop there. There was a fossil called Glossopterus, which sounds like some crazy big, huge dinosaur, but was actually just a fern, just a plant. And they found it in South America, Africa, Antarctica, and even Australia. Mesosaurus as well, which was an alligator-like dinosaur, was found in different continents as well, which gave rise to possibly that the dinosaurs walked across. The third and final evidence was climate zones. So Wegener looked down deep down into the rock, which goes and gives you a, a brief history glimpse of time. And he saw that in the climate zones there, that he saw areas like in India showed evidence of glaciers, which is interesting because if you look at India, it is located right along the equator. That's the equator, which is the warmest part of the earth. So it was very inconceivable for India to have glaciers, which gave rise to the possibility that India was down again near Antarctica and has since moved all its way all the way up to the equator with its climate changing. And it didn't stop there. There was an area up near Norway, an island called Spitsbergen. Spitsbergen up near Norway. They looked down at its um, plant material way down at the bottom and saw evidence of ferns and cycads, which is interesting because ferns and cycads grow in tropical areas along the equator. So Spitsbergen was probably near the equator and has since moved up, again giving rise that these continents are moving. And so he called his supercontinent, which I have alluded to before, as Pangaea. Pangaea, which means supercontinent. Okay, supercontinent. And this was about 300 million years ago. And as since the continents have drifted, thus the continental drift theory have drifted apart. And unfortunately for Wegener, 
his theory was not looked at well. They thought it was crazy that these big, huge, massive continents, even Europe and Asia, look at those, they could actually move. And so he was actually, theory was rejected because mainly he couldn't produce the why or the how the continents move. Today we know what's pushing them, okay? But he couldn't figure out what was pushing the continents, okay? And so he didn't know about the asthenosphere below and the molten magma pushing those continents around. And today we do know about it. And so it wasn't until the work later of Harry Hess and seafloor spreading and other scientists along with J. Tuzo Wilson that the plate tectonic theory came about and we realized that Wegener was right, okay? And it was long after he had died. He had died in Greenland doing research on this topic because it so just enthralled him, okay? But he was a pioneer to help produce the theory that the continents do move and gave us our present day theory today. And so that's the continental drift theory. Next, we'll go into seafloor spreading, but that was the theory basically. And so know the three evidences, matching landforms, fossil evidence, climate zones, leading to Pangaea, okay? And later we learn about how the continents move. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you do, please click on and good luck if you're studying this in school and we'll see you soon. I'm Mr. Adamucci and we're out for today.